last minute Tinder date and I'm pretty sure somewhere a guy named Mike is telling people about his god awful Tinder horror story. What? What? You you deserve to be single, madame. You deserve to be single. All right. We got we got through a lot of stuff today, babe, but you're going to get some of the worst of it. So actually, this is not a partner shaming. This was a weird one. This is a weird one that I would like for us all to psychologically assess. Um, it's odd. It's a person who is telling a Tinder story where they're basically like explaining they're trying to get on ahead of the jump on if some guy named Mike comes on here telling a bad Tinder story, she's going to tell her side first. And she admits that she's the problem. So there is that. That being said, let's let's pull it up. I went on a last minute Tinder date on Saturday and I'm pretty sure somewhere a guy named Mike is telling people about his god awful Tinder horror story. So here's my side. <laughs> Um, I had planned Saturday night with a friend. I had matched with poor Mike about a week ago and he asked me out, but I was busy. And my plans got canceled right when I got done with my hair and makeup, of course. So I reached out and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm free if you still wanna get together. And so he says, yeah, let's go get a drink. And then he proceeds to take me to a coffee house. Um, and I just, I was in kind of a party mind frame. I was like, dude, let's go get a drink. And he says, well, you can get one, but I'm not going to. And so that was kind of weird, but I had, you know, I just, I wasn't, didn't get drunk. I just had a couple drinks and sat there and talked and we talked for about two hours. We had a good conversation. Um, it was going really well. And then he asks, you know, what are you looking for? And I said, I'm not really looking for anything. My heart is broken. I just, I just am looking for people to hang out with. And so he, uh, pretty much immediately gets a rescue text. So right then, oh, my friend has an emergency. I've got to go. And he just runs off and I'm fine with that. Like, we're good, right? I'm I'm an adult. It's not for everybody. We're fine. So I'm heading back Adults to my part of my side of the true. town, which is like a drive because it's across the city. And my phone's blowing up, but I just ignore it and keep driving. So I go back to, I go back to my like neighborhood bar and sit down, order up, all the regulars, people that I know are there. And he calls me and he's like begging me. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Can How I many red flags are you, you guys at? By I way? actually had an emergency. I, I know it looks bad, but I really truly had an emergency and I feel terrible and I will come to you. Like just, I'll come hang out with you wherever you are. And so I actually said no at first. I was like, dude, you kind of blew it. Like best wishes. I, I don't know what to say. And he's like, no, really, I feel terrible. Even if I just want to say sorry, I need to, I need to apologize. And so I finally relented and was like, all right. And I told him where I was. So I hang up and I have another drink. So I'm two drinks in now. And he calls me I back about 10 minutes about later. Had earlier, but... And he goes, can we go to a different bar? And I kind of snap and I go, dude, this is where I am. You left in the middle of the date and now you like i'm not going out of my way to come meet you anywhere like you can come to me or not like i really don't care honestly so he says okay okay no i'm coming i'm coming so when i hang up all the people sitting around me at the bar they're like what's going on who was that what's happening and they're fully invested now in this whole story that's part one we will definitely get to part two but oh my god Okay, I think the first red flag I counted was the fact that she was so immediately turned off by the fact that it was a coffee date. And this is something we've brought up before. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever made a video about it, but this is something TJ and I have talked about. And I'm sure you guys have seen is that it's like a whole controversy right now of people debating on if coffee dates are acceptable dates. See, I didn't even realize this needed to be, like, debated on, quite frankly. But it's like, yeah, and that, that was another, that everyone's listing all the red flags right over here. One was the fact that she was, like, for some reason offended about the coffee. Two, the fact that she assumed that him saying, like, let's go get drinks definitively meant alcohol. 
And that when he did not necessarily choose to engage that, it was weird. And then the other red flag was the fact that the whole reason he got this emergency text is because he asked her, what are you looking for? And she was like, nothing. Like, well, time for me to hit the old dusty trail. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, that that is kind of an instant no for a lot of people. That is kind of like an instant, like, well, then I don't really know what I'm doing here. If one person is looking for love and the other person is looking for just friends, I also want to know who paid for those two drinks before he left. If all she's looking for is friends, I just want to know who paid for those two drinks. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say on your speculation as to what made him want to come back. I'm curious from a guy's perspective, from how I interpreted that situation was he was like, "Ah, no, no, I'm sick of this. I'm done with dates that go nowhere and chilling with like spending all my time on these girls who don't want anything. Like, that's why he asked. First of all, there's a reason you ask a question like that. And I feel like the kinds of guys who are asking what you're looking... I guess that's not true, because if you're looking to just hook up, like... But then if he was just looking to look hook up, I feel like he wouldn't have had such a response unless it really was a real emergency. I'm in the camp of it was either... Sorry, the lighting got really messed up. Anyway, I feel like it's one of two things. Either it was a real emergency and he doesn't actually care that she just wants to hook up. Or he was originally like, nope, 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 I'm done. But then like three hours later got horny and was like, you know what? I'm going to go for that shit. (laughs) What do you think? Man, maybe he was like, (laughs) you know what? Let's just... Let's call our losses. I, yeah, I feel like at first he was like, no, dude, I'm sick of wasting my time. And then he was like, let's get messy. I got time to waste. It is strange that he came back because like, I don't even think he like had a buddy that he met up with, but he, he claims that he did. He claims that his buddy was like going through a bad breakup. I don't know if it's mentioned in part one or two. It's not like a major spoiler because there's so many other details that just make this so much worse. But he wanted to come back to have some coffee. Since he messaged her back, I think it was an emergency. There was a phone a friend for sure. Well, here's the thing too is like, I feel like you can usually tell if someone is like preparing for something like that. Like I feel like she would have noticed if like he sent out a message first and then was suddenly like a weird but I guess you wouldn't know like he could just pretend like oh my god so weird I just got a text and he didn't I'm I'm like down one of two camps either it was like an honest to god emergency or he was getting like what's a, what's a word I'm looking for uh like that it's kind of like the spirit of the staircase like the regret after the fact mm. of like Buyer's you know what remorse. <laughs> but, like, the opposite of buyer's remorse. Unbuy, like, yeah, he actually, had, he is actually ready to co- come back for the milk. So let's get on to part two. Okay, so part two of me being the Tinder whore story, like, worst date ever. Um, so the guy is coming to the bar that I'm at. I'm getting pretty buzzed at this point, and everybody sitting around me wants to know why I just had this conversation. That's kind of another red flag for me, by the way, was that she knows everybody at the bar. And I've got these two 23-year-old guys sitting next to me, and now, mind you, this is a bar I've been to. These are not creeps. It's very Cheers-like. They're they're super nice. This was not creepy or off-putting in any way. But they... They start just going on and on, showering me in praise, like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. How could he leave this beautiful woman? What is the matter with him? Um, they to thought the they, they actually the left the bar, went 20, to the gas station, yeah. bought me those little like fake flowers and came back and were like, just in case you don't have a good night, you know, if, you know, in case you have a date dud or whatever, um, super cute. The whole, the whole bar was invested in this, this story. So the guy walks in and it took him like 45 minutes to get there. And I'm, I'm drunk. I'm drunk at this point. And this poor guy walks in and everybody just starts giving him shit like hard. And they're just like, Oh, you couldn't hang out with this girl. We've already got her flowers. Like, you know, what, what did you bring to the table and just start giving him shit. And he's sober, right? He hasn't had any drinks and Oh my gosh, I felt so bad. So we go to play pool. I, I like feel like I should rescue him, kind of. So we go to play pool, and 
you know that like you know that thing where you're like oh what was something that gave you the ick okay this guy playing pool gave me the ick he was so That's feminine so and He's... bad at pool and it just made my skin crawl and i was instantly just done and he'd only been there for like 10 or 15 minutes and my entire vibe was just like i don't like you you're ick so we I'm wrap sure it up like we, we finish this painful it. game of pool and he's like okay i'm gonna pay and go home i'm so, so he, drunk, is he is paying i literally forgot about him while he was still there he's two feet away from me paying the bill and i'm telling these guys how he gave me the ick and i'm like oh that guy was so icky then one of them says, well, are you finally going to give me your number? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I called him Icky and gave my number to another guy, like right in front of him. And I didn't even know I did it. Like I was so drunk. And then the other guy goes, oh, he just stormed out of here. And I go, who? <laughs> and he goes, the guy. Oh, that, yeah, and I go, funny. what guy? And he goes, the <laughs> guy that you were just talking to 30 seconds ago. And I was like, oh, he's still here. I'm sorry, Mike. I, I, I went feral. I'm sorry. That, oh. that does honestly, like that all comes back to the drinking, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like it's, uh, that sounds a lot like when I d dated someone in college who did a lot of drinking and like, I knew that I was flipping a coin whenever they had gone out and I was meeting them. It's like, great. Am I going to get, am I going to get fun significant other or am i going to get Ooh, they they're revving their engine tonight let me tell you something about you that you don't know and it's like <laughs> yep you tell me whatever like you want to know why i don't drink I a lot like that's why i don't that drink the way a lot. that he played pool was icky i bet he never even that's thought... that's one of the weirdest <laughs> things it's like i have no idea why she brought up the pool thing when it's like this entire story both parts one and two is about how you're the shitty date how you're the you're the asshole here and then like two-thirds of the way through in like the bridge of the song you're coming here and being like oh but by the way like mike was kind of an ick too and then but then you come you come right back around and being like but really it's me i'm the problem it's like you that didn't do anything but cast light on how shitty of a person you are. It actually did nothing on being like, oh, guys. And he was like, it was super icky how, like, feminine and bad at pool he was. It's like, nobody is listening to the story, sis, and going like, oh, my God. Yes, they're going and being like, wow, I didn't think you could get worse. And then you opened your mouth and said that like it's it's like you you just went yeah. you just went hard for proving me wrong in thinking that you were gonna actually kind of being redeeming person throughout the story like you just sort of like doubled down and being a piece of shit exactly this this kind of plays on like a trope that i've been seeing a lot where and this is definitely a female culture thing is women will like play almost with the idea of self-awareness but without taking it all the way to accountability it's where you see like the humor of like and in my house my husband's not allowed to decorate anything everything i say goes <laughs> and it's like a skit it's like a joke but they do nothing to correct the behavior it's like they're self-aware of what they're doing and they'll even like own up to it they'll be like oh yeah i totally do that it's funny right it's funny and that's like the way this whole video carried itself is it's like oh man like we're getting there we're gonna get to this like self humor where like you make fun of yourself but we never ended up getting like a punchline or like a learning moment or yeah, like anything was, that exactly. redeemed her. Like she just told the story and then it was almost as if she was telling it to get the it's okay that happens to us all. Like it's almost like that's what she was farming for. Yeah. Was for people to say like, oh, thank you for this funny story. Like this is hilarious. So relatable. Dude. I just, 
heard a horrible story. I like I feel like Mike just gave up on dating. Mm-hmm. I feel like Mike is one of the many men in my comments who is just like I am so fucking sick of dating. Like it is ladies like you that caused him to do the emergency text and then that right. last life he had. His final gameplay before just being like I'm this is it. Mike's going to go home and he's going to have a crystal clear view on the type of person that he wants to, like, do things with now. He's not going to waste his time anymore. There's some things that Mike could have done to probably avoid this. Like, for example, we just covered the guy who had made plans with a girl to go on a date, but then when he found her TikTok and saw that she was making very similar content to, like, to this lady's, telling horror date stories and, like, a lo- oftentimes just, like, making fun of men, because I'll show you guys, this is not, this is basically her TikTok is, like, oh, listen to all my horror dating stories. And if you actually, like, do your research on these people before you meet up with them, a lot of this stuff is pretty easy to find. So that guy finds this girl's TikTok of just her shitting on men and speaking negatively about men, and he ends up calling out off the date. And sure enough, he ends up in one of her TikToks being like, can you believe this guy is telling on himself by calling off the date because he saw my TikTok? And it's like, yes, because you just proved that any anxieties he might have had about getting roasted about the date not going well would have absolutely ended up... (laughs) Right. <laughs> like, ended up true. Like, his anxieties would have absolutely been correct. I looked at her other videos, because this is, like, her content. Winter 2023 Tinder dating season has come to an end. Here's a recap of my first and mostly last dates. First date of the season was a guy that we obviously swiped on each other based on looks only. We didn't read each other's profiles. We show up to meet for coffee, and he's shorter than me awkwardly shorter than me like, so we stumble through a couple minutes of awkward conversation her profile name in should which just I mentioned be that my kids here's are all my red and flags I'm kind of done being around kids and he looks at me and goes well i have a two-year-old which was on his profile i just didn't actually read it so we chugged our coffee and got out of there and that sucked that was embarrassing you know what my me. ick is Someone agreeing to go on a date with me and waste my fucking time and money. How more lazy can you get in the day of dating profiles where it's like, I agreed to go on the date and I never read the profile. What? What? You you deserve to be single, madame. You deserve to be single. If you cannot do the literal fuck, you can't do the bare minimum. And it's, it's so, like, another thing too is I saw this, and I'm now that I'm re-watching it, I'm just noticing another thing that bothers me, is that, remember she said, oh, we didn't read each other's profiles. What did he miss about you? Because it seems like you're the only one who came unprepared. Are you assuming that if he knew how tall you are, he would not have wanted to come on the date? Because... Men don't care if women are taller. I just saw a diagram that someone posted that was like, um, how men or how women look at, and it's like men shorter than them. And then like, eh, men the same size as them. eh, And then the only ones they're happy with are men, uh, taller than them. And then it was like how men feel about, and it's like women shorter than them, women taller than them, women the same size as them. And it's just a guy going, she never said anything that he failed to read. But she is, like, now reallocating the blame. Like, well, it was really on both of us. No, dude. Like, you were being an asshole. Like, this whole profile is, like, professionally posting my own L's and red flags. Date number two was a guy... Uh, I don't know why I was embarrassing the both interest, But his profile pictures were really iffy. There was a lot of, like, far away and sunglasses and hats and stuff like that. But I'm not super shallow. I'm a little shallow, but not super shallow. And I went ahead and met him for a drink. And he if you cared that he hit about his height, you're super shallow. Because he I'm was sorry. driving a great distance from work and wanted to make sure I was actually coming to the date. And I said, yes, I will be there. I get there. He's really unattractive. Like, he just, it just did not do it for me. So we finish the drink. I pay for myself. And we're going Fine. to leave. And I just, out of politeness, said, well, do you have to drive back? And he says... No, I got a hotel across the street. I was hoping you would stay with me. And I laughed in his face and said, no, I'm going home. 
That was date number two. Date number three, very nice guy. We chit chatted for several days, had a lot of good banter, and then showed up, didn't say a word. I mean, I'd say, oh, I really like my job. I'm blessed to have a career that I love. And he'd go, yeah, that's great. And then just sit there in silence. So for two hours, while we went axe throwing and drove in the car together, I had to completely carry the conversation. Yeah, that's awkward. Um, Another first date I have. Met a guy for a drink in the bar. um, Ended up laughing our asses off. Played pool, played darts, and made out in the bar and closed it down. And it was a fucking great night. We still hang out. And let's see. Last but not least would have been... Mike, infamous Mike, um, as yep, anyone boy. who's seen my last few videos knows about Mike, and that ended badly as well. So, thus concludes the winter 2023 Tinder dating dude, season. So she was still need a break and- bone in that other dude when she went on a date with Mike. They still talk, they still hang out, which like, okay, that's fine, that's fine. If you're still dating, you're allowed to do that. I know, I know that. I definitely noticed she said we still hang out. But I actually asked her. I was like, hey, so genuine question. Why do you make these videos? I was like, is this like you being self-aware in hopes of working on these qualities? Or do you just honestly think this is funny? And she liked the comment, but did not respond to it. And that was about 24 hours ago. <laughs> she might be thinking about how to respond to it. You might have, maybe she has to think about how, like, it might be something she has to think about how to respond. I was honestly, because I don't, I would love to know. I don't understand. I can't imagine what the point of coming on here and saying all that crazy shit is. If it wasn't to be like... I had a lot to work on with myself, like, please join me as I, like, acknowledge these issues and work on them, but it seems like she's just kind of like, you know, sometimes I fuck around and get drunk and sloppy and ruin people's night, and it's just a silly, goofy time. That should just be her Tinder profile. They would, honestly, she'd probably have great (laughs) success, dude. I just, like, I'm, how long do these people think that they can maintain this model of running TikToks where all they do is talk about cringy dates that they've been on? (gasps) All right, we're getting out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will do this again soon. We love you. Bye.